Good morning everybody. It's Breakfast with the Masters. It's the 15th of June and I guess, I guess you can hear our mascot Hobbs in the background. Hey buddy. Just waking up. Uh, he, yeah, he's with us all, all summer. Let's see. I don't have any admin. We have the wrong screen. You don't have... Oh, okay. Hang on. That's weird. Okay. Does that look better? Thanks, Matt. How's everybody been? Good weekend? All right. P Pete's going to three national parks. Going to the Dakotas and ending in, wow, out in Vegas. Wow. Have a great time, Pete. Do me a favor. Just forget all about uh all this stuff and enjoy your holiday okay i don't want to hear i don't want to find you dialed in and stuff oh you could you can email shane and see if he's available um you know people do visit him and he goes on hikes and stuff um where he red rock where he lives is beautiful so 90 inches of snow on pikes peak wow my God, you got so you got just completely blowed out, huh, David? That's a lot of snow. Yeah, I, I would guess there'd be no trip. Oh, great! Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. Yeah, he'd love it. It also might be a little less noisy than what he's playing with this morning. Hops is, you know, it, it's easy to get bored sitting in the back cave, other than me. So, anyway, all right, so today, I know the tape got, hey, Amanda, I know the tape got up, probably got up a little bit late this weekend because weekends happen, and um, mom and dad are virtual taxis. So, all day in Phoenix in 107 degree weather because Lucy was uh, at a, uh, workshop for marching band. She's a section leader this year and uh, so she was down with the uh, Academy Drum and Bugle Corps from the Phoenix area learning about how to run sectional practices. So, And Al, that's fine. Send me the speed check uh, when you get it. So anyway, um, what, we want, what we want to do today um, and may, you know you'll probably want to go back and review the tape from last week but what we want to do today is you've heard me talk about being smooth and round right nobody has okay and it sounds easy but it's, of course it's hard you know when you get there David you know that you've you've mastered yourself Okay, it's difficult, and something you know that you've seen um, in this last week and a half, and you're going to see again today is um, eh, there's no real turn for it. But I'm by. I am. I. It's either side is the same to me. Okay, so when you become very smooth and round, if you can find. Uh, Boom Boom used to say this. If you can find the stream, don't fight the water. If the water takes you up, go up. If the water takes you down, go down. And um, as you've seen in the crude market, you can have an opinion and just take the longs. You would have made lots of money. You can have an opinion and just take the shorts. You can have lots of money. You can also take both if you're capable, if you're smooth and round and capable of trading both sides, that is waiting on having an opinion, seeing the signs that lead you to a trade, being open to both sides, there's just all kinds of money. Crude has just been a printing press. Now markets go through these periods it's not like they're all the time and sometimes it's a market that you're not watching so you'll miss it but um, 
market, the market goes through these periods where if you're smooth and round and open to the possibilities, you can get very a very large number of trades and generally if you're seeing them well that your your hit ratio goes way up so today we're going to continue in the crude market it still has more to show us and more to teach us okay so we're going to actually start off right where we left off for every cra for whatever crazy reason I'm still generally bias short I know it's a fault working on it. Yeah, well, Pete, you may find out that you're just better from the short side. I've had people in mentoring that could only buy or could only sell. You, if you if you know that, you can work on it, but don't fight it. Don't force yourself to take longs just because you're trying to get out of that habit. It'll just cost you money. Okay, this is not about you know, I can trade this market, I get a badge, or I can trade both long and short, therefore I get a badge. It's only about making money, folks. So if you know that's your your uh, one of your faults, you can work on it, but don't fight it. What helped me, Tim, is to turn the chart over if you can and study. Oh, there you go. So print a chart out and then study the up move as a down move. That's a that's a good idea, David. I uh, when I had a summer house, I don't anymore. Although my wife is now talking about a winter house for when the kids are gone. But when we used to have a big summer house on a lake, um, I did have a uh, computer up there, an execution platform. What I like to do is I would print out about 500 charts before we went up on Friday afternoon, and then. Uh, I'd sit out on the dock, um, middle of Wisconsin, a place called Green Lake. BJ and Pat know it, I'm sure. And um, sit out on the dock or out on the boat and just mark up charts. Yeah, big trout. Yeah. A little busier than when I had my house, though. That's why I got rid of a pet. Yeah, Perry, it, it, it was just a fishing paradise. And also, um, they actually, that you know, the America's Cup, the yacht races, it's so deep that that was the secret practice lake, um, which was pretty cool. You got to see the America, America's Cups boats from America. It is a quite expensive lake, yes, but it's a cool place. Anyway, but we don't go there anymore. Um, we're, 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 I'm trying to get the motivation. No snapping turtles. Ah, back in the, there's a, there are a couple areas back in the feeder streams where there's snapping turtles but not many anyway um, I'm trying to get in the habit of uh, going to lakes here and fishing because there's lots of believe it or not in Arizona there's lots of lakes and uh, there's some good fishing you don't eat them because a lot of the runoff because of all the mining a lot of the fish are full of mercury and lead and stuff but uh, great fishing so that's okay I, don't, I just like to fish so, you lost sound, Perry? Anybody else lose sound? No? Sorry, Perry. It'll come back. Okay. So, this is where we left off. On this trade. Now the market is coming up. This was our, uh, our target. You can see we're leaving trailing stops, hit our target. Now at this point, I know the median line is still drawn in, but really I consider this up sloping median line dead. Okay? It's it looks like it's gone horizontal to me. It's also gone through the first warning line and to the second warning line. A lot of people would be a lot of people are still gonna go, well, respected it here. It did a nice job on both sides here and turned at this warning line um, and paused here and now it's at the lower parallel. What about another shot at it here? I, as far as I'm concerned, the way I look at it is 
yeah, we slid, but we slid from the second warning all the way down to the lower parallel. And we really, really went, this is a nice horizontal move. And we broke out to the downside. So as far as I'm concerned, this median line, although it gave me nice trades, is dead. Yeah, I don't think it's really a slide. I think it's just coincidental that it is at this point. So what I'm telling you, though, is when price, at, when you get this kind of action, you're this far outside, and now you're down to the lower parallel. A lot of people are still attracted to this median line. Hey, Kai. Yeah, I think this is the, the actually, I think this is the pane of glass, and this is the confirmation, but somewhere in here, it, it's the, it's over. I don't know, people have sound coming in and out. Gina, can you hear me now? Yeah, everybody else is fine. Okay. Okay, so the pane of glass is somewhere in here. And the key to just remember is it's very horizontal, and then when it's very horizontal, it's either going to break to the upside or the downside. We've broken to the downside. Yeah, and I, so I think this median line is dead for me. But when it's here, there's lots of people that are going to look at test, retest, I guarantee you. This is where, you know, people will quote me and say, well, you know, if you get a test and a retest, go ahead and take the trade. Okay. Yeah. Over here. Up here, but not so much. I'd be more inclined, if I wanted to trade on a median line, I'd be more inclined to grab a bottom and grab the width of this if it turned up, right? And refresh the frequency. Does price taking out two major, two minor f pivots factor in? Um, sure. But more important, but even easier, I shouldn't say more importantly, Aaron, is this is horizontal. And this right here, this line right here tells the tale. I'm sounding better? Thanks, Sharon. So you generally let go of your old median lines and just pay attention to freshness. Well, Gina, at some point, it, it's also, I, you know, I had this beautiful run and took my, I, I projected this profit target. It got up there and went horizontal right where price should run out of energy. It's time to reset your focus, right? It's that door at the top too. Yeah, this is like a door. Bang, bang. They never got in there, right? Absolutely. So it's time to just reset your mind. Don't hang on to this meeting line. Don't hang on to this idea. Otherwise, you're not going to be smooth and rounded. You're going to be stuck with the... And you, you're liable to do a test, retest, and then get blown out. So, because even if you got long here, you've only got 60 pips to the upside. Right? And you're using a 25 pip stop at this point. Doesn't work. So, we need a new orange is the new black kind of thing. We need a new need something new. Something new is going to happen. It might reset and it might go on to the upside, but at the moment we have to sweep all the ideas out, okay, and go with where the water takes us. And we're sitting at this point on 20 some stops. I think. Maybe more. So, you know, you know, you don't, we're not forced to trade. We don't want to be cavalier about, okay, I got all these stops, I can just waste one. Instead, we want to, there's no pressure to trade. Let's wait till the market shows us what it's all about, right? So let's see, let's see what we get. So it starts to swing up. Now it goes vertical after this pause. And this is where I say people, you might, you might get excited and go, oh, you know, maybe I should be buying here. Maybe this media line's still in play if you if you think that then grab a low and put in a new median line new media upsloping median line right i don't like the trade location no because i have this right in front of me and we've come up so far
So I want the market, it's not that I'm buying short, I want the market to reset in one direction or the other. This is not enough for me to reset the market to the upside. So we'll see. Well, I mean, you know, two wide range bars higher. Plenty of people would be, you know, salivating. I got to get in. And this one you can see is, you know, bid to taking the offer. So impulse traders are going to try and get long here. Me, I'm more likely to take a short against this horizontal section right here. This in, the entire structure set this up as a likely door and it worked perfect until this door gets beaten down I'm likely to you know put in simply this well it's a Let's do it, but spell it right. <clears throat> okay. Now, maybe you want to see the test and retest up there. That's fine. Or maybe you just want to put the order in. Both of those ideas are fine. Remember, seeing price action up there will give you some information, but it will cost you something right so you have to decide whether you want to pay for the information or whether you're ready to trade there's nothing wrong with either one okay sellers are here at the door we swing into the area I've just got orders there get filled it goes up a bit more turns okay so now we you know, how many times have we seen this the poke higher and that it failed to make a new high it's really important clue right <clears throat> my I'm short right here that's my order I'm willing to trust the, the door okay I'm I'm in the stream okay I can feel this this makes sense I'm willing to sell up in here it's solid All right, so now we've got a line of maximum excursion heading to the downside. And the key course is going to be right here. But I like the door. I like that we failed to make a new high. So, you know, I'm thinking, obviously, top. and selling the shoulder yeah. it actually also turned on the magenta median line uh, okay I'll take that um, for target is the first problem area the last low on the left well it is um, and let's see what I can get out of this So I can, I'm at more than two to one. So I can, you know, as I get, I'm not even going to wait for this to print. As I get into this congestion area, I've talked about some of you guys in mentoring. For profits as well as when to set break even, it's this congestion, not the lows, right? Make sense?
So if it gets down in that area, I'm immediately going to break even. Uh, might hit something. Okay. Um, now notice the volatility is picked up. Let's get rid of this. L look all the way over you know, the entire run. Now look at this volatility. That tells you that okay, it's a good thing that you've you're using 25 ticks, and you're probably going to need all of them. And the ride is probably not going to be as gentle as it was before. These bars you know, you need all twenty five just for these bars as compared to over here where you had lots of safety using just the ATR. Everybody see the difference? So at the moment this is a bumpy ride. Now that in and of itself is a clue. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Let me let it develop before I let the let the Hobbs out of the bag. Oh, what Hobbs went to sleep. Thank you, buddy. So you can see it's a fight. Can't we're not a break even yet, and it's a fight. I'm at break even now. It's volatile. There's lots of two way closes on the low, closes on the highs, closes on the low, closes on the highs. It's a ride that I'm, you know, I'd like to make money on, but at this point, I don't want to lose any money on it because it's ultra volatile, right? Notice that I took this line of maximum excursion, copied it to this pivot. Okay, so now we take out the prior lows. See it? So the breakout sellers jump in with both hands. So everybody see that? Okay. Classic, and what does this generally cause? Yeah, it's a, if you, a bunch of people get, well, it may run down a bit, but most, more importantly, that that's what this tail is right here, is the breakout sell at the market orders, okay? Yeah, price will fluctuate now because they have poor trade location. That's generally what happens. They might get a bar or two in their favor, but I think it's, interesting this was an important base this red line and then more important is our line of maximum excursion is sitting right in front of them they don't know that because they don't trade anything with slope this is a perfect example of as is this breakout buyers breakout sellers and if you wonder why 95 percent of the people that open accounts fail within six months it's because how many momentum traders are there how many MACD traders are there how many RSI traders are there how many trade the breakout of the 200 period moving average or 50 period moving average okay these people just get they just got exploded A market like this that has high volatility will just eat them alive. So if you look, let's just look at this formation for a second. We know that people now are getting short. It's taken out the prior low. It's left a lower high. We're short at the 
shoulder, which is great trade location. Okay, don't often get perfect trade location, but that one is very nice. Take a look at this chart. What are we likely to see at this point? What you should be doing as each bar unfolds is you should be thinking, okay, do I expect a wide range bar to the downside? Or do I expect somebody says a bounce, somebody, a man says a bounce, Jay says a weak reaction? Yeah, I would expect that these people that are selling with poor trade location are going to get hung. Probably reverse at the lower excursion line back into the range. Okay. If you can imagine this thing reversing, and David says a pullback maybe all the way up to the line of maximum excursion, does anybody know what this actually will turn out to be if we get that kind of motion? It's a, yeah, we just got it. Anybody else? Yeah, it's a rolling chop. It is a pendulum pullback, yes. Well, Kai, watch, and I'll show you what a rolling chop is. It'll be a pendulum pullback, but here's here's how you can trade this. You can trade this. Here's the thing, and I don't I don't recommend this for you guys. But if you become rolling chop with a downslope, that's right. If you become buy trade, if you can trade from the upside and the downside, and you are very good with money management, you can actually trade the short and the long side in this thing if you recognize the rolling chop. You got to recognize the rolling chop though first. Once you, or you can just pick a side, or you can position trade it. It's up to you. But if you actually recognize it's a rolling chop, you can actually trade the moves. Not what I meant to do, but okay. So <clears throat> let's see how it plays out. People are selling the breakouts. They're they're even selling in here now, and then of course the breakout sellers force the new low. It makes a new low but closes higher and higher and okay now the ne their necktie is getting tighter and tighter if they're not already gone right now watch what makes it a rolling chop you're gonna see people peel off their positions and or go long here. It's just the nature of the beast. Especially people that just got stung. Unfortunately, and I have lots of people that I mentor that are in the same boat, most traders are their worst, enter, their worst enemy. What Would you call that a sloped range? Sure. And it's volatile enough that if you're not careful you will chop yourself up in this range. If you can get trade location and an edge there's lots of money to be made. Okay? Amanda says at this point would you be thinking your BE would be safe? Um, Amanda at this point if it gets anywhere near break even I just want to be out. Okay. Because this is so volatile, I got to the point where I had two stops in it and everybody got short. You know, the bad traders got short. Sorry, no offense if you're a breakout trader, and some of you are. But I don't I don't want to be you know, I don't want that stink on me. If it gets anywhere near my price, just, just that's that's all right. In other words, I don't mind being, I don't mind my profit stop, which is a break even. I don't mind it getting taken out. It's okay with me. Part of the game, right? I now have a lot of ticket to the downside. If it ends up costing, you know, bringing me nothing, that's okay. It costs me nothing. So. Watch what happens as the people that sold down here with bad trade location have to deal with reality. 
Oops. Can you see him getting stopped out? Now, when natural gas in the 1990s was under one cent, we would see rolling chops that would go on for days. You could, you could take 10, 15 trades in the same, uh, well, let's just call it a channel, for, for lack of a better word. Not the type of channel that channel traders use, but that same downward sloping coil or upward sloping coil. You could take 10 trades out of it before it changed, before it finally broke out. And the key is, as people are getting short, yeah, copper was unfortunately doesn't trade that way anymore, but copper for 10 or 15 years was like that. And um, uh, I'm sure I'll be giving you copper stories in September, but um, as people are getting short, if you're trading this rolling chop aggressively, on these new lows, you want to be taking your profit as people are getting out of their shorts with their trade poor location. You want to be resetting your position. That's not what I did here. The risk reward's not enough for me, and the bars are too volatile. I'm just going to sit on my short. But if if this was more tame, and the risk reward, if you see if the maximum excursion was smaller we wouldn't need a 25 tick stop on this but we need it we need every every penny of it look how wide these bars are so I don't have the risk reward to trade both sides so I I'm just gonna sit with my short but watch what happens people get short on these breakouts and watch what happens if I had been drawing on this chart I would have been tempted to connect those tops to create a channel well I we did connect the tops, okay? Um, or perhaps a sliding parallel with the line of maximum to connect the tops. How could I have stopped myself drawing those in? Well, I did, didn't I just connect the tops, Robbie? And put it to the downside? Oh, you're talking about these tops here? It's too volatile. Look at the volatility. The, I'll draw it for you, Robbie, and then and take a look at why it makes no sense. The, relative to the size, I mean, you could draw it, but you're not going to trade off of it. Relative to the size of these bars, you need price above, you need your stop above a major structure, and this is not a major structure. Follow me? Selling here is just as bad as selling here. I mean, it's not going to hurt you as bad, but you're going to get hurt. If you're going to sell, sell to the line of maximum excursion if you can afford this high. Hear me? If you're going to sell, sell to the line of maximum excursion with a stop above this high. If you can't do that, don't sell. with me okay so would you agree the more gentle the slope of a rolling chop the easier to say it's it it's not only the how gentle the the slope is it's more important it's also the condition of the bars these bars are so large relative to the range okay that it's a it's difficult unless you absolutely sell the top of the poke it's difficult because the size of these bars you know the most you're getting is two to one for the entire range that makes it difficult Ouija that means you're gonna have to survive a r several run runs up against you to get profit on the downside make sense this is what and if, this is one you might First of all, Amanda, you'd be happy to get stopped out because you go, this is so volatile, I don't want to play. And you would certainly be willing to get to a profit position because it is so volatile. And you're going to have, you're going to watch price coming right 
back at you in the face. And you're going to have to watch it probably twice before, if this is a rolling chop, before it gets down to a place that you're willing to accept the profit. Okay? So watch what happens as these people get stopped out. So this is what I wrote. This is either a rolling chop or I'm about to be profit stopped. So I'm either going to get stopped out of break even. I can't go any place other than there. Or it's going to stop around this line of maximum excursion. All right. In which case we do have the slope correct. So we either we either have the slope correct, which, which means this is a rolling chop, or this is just ultra vol volatile. It's a trading range, and here's the trading range. Here's the high, and here's the low, which means we're going to get stopped out of break even. Follow? Well, Sharon says the, this last bar, though, makes you feel that if I get down in here, Sharon, I'll feel that I'm safe. This bar, I feel better, but I don't know that it's over. I mean, look at these bars. This is this is volatile stuff. Okay, I'm Sharon. I'm feeling better, or not. Now, if you didn't get in, or if you took your profit at prior lows, although it would be three to one, you know, you could afford, you couldn't afford to be above here. That would be this. But you could be, that would be the secondary entry. And I probably wouldn't try it till the second time up. But, I'm sitting here, I'm at break even. So it actually comes right back up to the line of maximum excursion. So yeah, that there's be this should be it's a secondary entry and it's a weak reaction. You're you're you are underneath the good news is you are underneath a swing. This is a swing because it took out the low. But you're not underneath the top. You're not above the top. And great separation here. You can see that there's even the the sellers have moved down. See it? And again, for those of you in mentoring, you guys have seen me talk about this. This is the congestion. So if you're trying to take profits or trying to enter, this is the congestion area. This is where you should be thinking about not this ultimate high. And of course, you know, price couldn't get past that. Okay? That's a key area to look. So if you were taking profit here, you'd take it right down here. You wouldn't try for the low. I know it made it through the low, but you want to get out right here. Go ahead and leave that money on the table. All right, so let's see whether this line of maximum excursion holds. This was the secondary entry if you wanted to get in. Let's see if that makes sense. Or if, so now we're going to find out whether or not this is a range, a sloped range, or a horizontal range. If it's a horizontal range, I'm going to get stopped out. If it's a sloped range, this will be the top, and we'll make a new low. Okay? Savvy? All right. So, Sharon, now I'm happy. We did not make a new high. And we're taking out this little low right here. Trying to swing back up. But look how volatile it still is. 
not out of the woods yet. So it's left a horizontal chunk right here that looks a lot like this. See it? And I need it to break and close below this, which is the bottom of this horizontal section. And there it is. Now we should be on the way. Price is now probably on the way to a new low. Okay, so let's put this in. Price as you're watching live bar by bar when this bar prints you should you should immediately be thinking this swing's job is to take out the low right Presto changeo. So move up, get short. One leg lower, secondary entry. Yes, at this point, I don't know if it'll help you, but you, of course, could put in this stop. I mean, it's slightly, it's slightly better than break-even, but not much. No, actually, I think it's exactly break-even. So, no, no rest for the weary. Unless you just want to take your profits down here. But you're at break-even now. So, at, of course, profits are infinite at this point. Can you do that if you had the secondary entry as well? Um, well, Aaron... I, I would say, you, yeah, you should at least be at break even. The secondary entry, I think you should be at break even because you've gone two to one, right? If you want, if you want to be less aggressive and and be more safe, you can have your stop. You can go from up here to here. Amanda says the nice profit location might be the lower line of maximum exclusion as long as it's 3 to 1. So let's look. If you've got the original position on, it's about here. It's just 3 to 1. So, yeah, that's fine. But remember this. It's down sloping. The longer you ride this, the more you're going to make, right? And I know it's volatile, but the longer you can ride this, the I'm not telling you not to take your money three to one. We've talked about this for weeks now. You know, logical profit target, especially if you're building your account or trying to become consistently profitable. I'd say if you're trying to build your account and it's a three to one and it gets to the line of maximum excursion, take the money and run. Especially as volatile as this section is, right? Do you have the courage to sit through 60 to 70% pullbacks? Yeah, well, that's, that's a question you have to ask yourself. I would say conviction. If you know how to trade rolling chops and you know what this means, that means exactly this. I don't know if I put this in, but here's what's happened right now, right? I know they just got screwed right here, but these same people are right back in selling here.
Okay. You see that you know. You, I don't know if it's still like this. You see this in the silver market all the time. Not only will they will they sell new lows, but you know, in uh, tight markets, then they'll buy the breakout high, then they'll sell the breakout low six, seven, eight times a day, trying to catch that one run. And you know, it's just it's stupid world. It, it really is. So you can see them selling the breakout low. And look at the bars. Look at the bars. See it? But I, I guarantee you that's what's going on. Okay, so I, I, I did write it in. So let me break breaks prior lows. The breakout sellers are in, right? Look at the close. See the close? See the break and the close? Oops. I mean, we're talking about within two hours. These people are screwing the pooch again. Yes, again, Amanda. Watch. Look at the bars. Closes on its high. Closes on its high. Closes on its high. Closes on its high. These people are about to run for cover again. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna run right up against them. Now the question is, should we break even? You got your two to one. Go to break even. It looks like look. Oh, looks like they're gonna be in good shape. I put in a line of maximum excursion off of these new lows. Look at the close. And they for a moment they they look good. So they're all, they're all excited. Oops. That's not good. This is shorts with poor trade location being stopped out. See it? You can just, if you've seen this off, if you've watched rolling chops often enough, you, you can just put these lines in in advance and watch As it comes up, you can put these lines in and just watch the orders get executed. Look at them. Closing on the high. Every bar closing on the high. It's just people, I can't take it anymore. Okay. I got screwed on this run up. Okay, I got in. That looks better. It made a new low. And I'm getting screwed on this run up. You know that hurts right so you can't sell in here you have to have good trade location this is okay now this is the next one up I don't know that I if, if I sold here and I took my money I'd probably walk away but we're right back up there again and I expect we'll get to the line of maximum excursion as these people stop themselves out remember the credo of trading a rolling chop is as these people get stopped out you want to enter as these people enter you want to get out okay we're above the line of maximum excursion we're above the line of maximum excursion. We're far away. If we stay at break even, we're not in danger yet. It's not that pleasant to watch it go 50, 60 pips against you, but 
that's the nature of this sloped range, right? Are those bars happening faster? Does rolling chops? These bars are happening very fast. Watch. Th 9.35, 9.37. 9.30, these are two-minute bars. Matt, there's some move fast and some move slow. But this is crude. Um, Sh Shane and I were talking last night. Shane's trading up at around 1400, 1444 bars. Um, you know, I moved from 377 to these bars, um, and for whatever reason, I seem to be on a on a major roll here. Um, you know, I'm I'm in the stream, so to speak. I'm not fighting the water. Hey, 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 Hobbs. What? It's just me. Shh. I woke him up out of a sound sleep. Hobbs, come back here. Hobbs, come here. Sorry for the interruption, guys. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. Go right back to sleep. Nobody's bothering you. Come on. Come on, lay down. You come over here. You have to have Hobbs at the keyboard here. My God. Does the blue line of maximum excursion at the bottom match copy to the secondary entry give a new frequency? I wouldn't use a new frequency. Kai? Yeah, Hobbs doesn't like rolling chops. Maybe he just got chopped. Now, what happened was I, I think I moved my chair over and pulled his. Now the cats aren't in here. I think I moved moved the chair over and pulled his uh, his lead line by mistake. All right, buddy. Yeah, so, sorry, Perry. I'm waking everybody's dog up. It's okay. So as we get up here, I wouldn't use this line of max excursion right now. I, I'm going to stick with the original line and watch what I do. So we're still above it. We'll close on the high. It still looks like people are now still interested in buying because it looks like it broke out of some tops. But remember, as as they are stopping themselves out, you want to be interested in selling or just hold your water if you're already short. That's a good sign. We break back inside. But you can see we're still fighting. Here's mirror bars. There's Hobbs again. Hey, buddy. How are you? What are you all jumpy about? So you can see how volatile it is. All right. So at this point, when we get this nice wide range bar back below the line of maximum excursion, I'm going to copy this frequency and add a sliding parallel. There it is. Shh. Hey, Hobbs. Could you settle down? What do you think you see? You know what, guys? Let me see what he, he's going on about. What's wrong? Come here. What do you see? Stop now. Stop. There's nothing out there. Hops. Stop. Yeah, I purposely muted myself so that uh, Mr. Hobbs would quiet down, close the door now. Hobbs is a Yorkshire Terrier. And right now he's a crazy Yorkshire Terrier. He No, he doesn't chew wire anymore. He'd be a dead Yorkshire Terrier if he started chewing stuff in the bat cave. Okay, so as we get back inside with nice separation, we're going to add a sliding parallel. Okay. 
Now, that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods. It just means that this may have shifted to the upside, right? It's ultra volatile. The whole thing might have shifted. We'll see. Looks good. I mean, we're making excursion to the downside. We're mindful of prior lows. I think these are expanding pivots, yes. Back above the line of maximum excursion, I would expect the sliding parallel to hold. I mean, we're, we're far, even the secondary entry is a long ways away at this point, which is what's nice. We try to get above a sliding parallel and fail. So now the question is, can we get down to prior lows? With me? You guys lost? Everybody with me? I know I know Hobbs interrupted everything, but okay. Again, people are selling the prior lows, right? See him selling the breakout now? They see this, they get all excited. Again, you wouldn't be drawing in line collecting the low with the higher low. Uh, no. I'm just, I have, there's no reason for me at this point, Robbie, to do anything. This, this site, this set of maximum excursions is just, is work like a charm. Why would I draw in anything else? It's so volatile. I know in some markets you do, Robbie, but let me reject this. I know in some markets you do, but how how would I know not to do that if I was drawing that? Robbie, I've explained it before. You need this entire range, meaning the sloped range, because of the size of the bars. So drawing inside of this, you're not helping yourself. You're hurting yourself. You're doing the same p set. You're make, causing the same problem. Look how you would have got stopped out up here that you wanted to connect the highs. Drawing inside, you need this whole wide range. Okay, that's how you know. It's so volatile, inside inside drawing is not going to help you other than the horizontal highs or lows that tell you, you know, that just kind of are like stop signs. But in terms of adding slope lines, you've got your two slope lines. That's all you need. You want to stay far back from this action. It's too volatile. And you certainly don't want to be these ninnies that are buying, you know, new highs and selling new lows. Okay? You, you're you sitting back in the weeds and letting them expend all their energy and just collecting their money. Here's the new lows coming again. See it? You see it? It's the same repetitive. This is the third time, maybe the fourth time. Same repetitive action. And, and you can see it and predict it. Now, so this is the third time. Let's just, let's just go back and, and keep track now. Here's our original entry. At this point, we've got... Uh, Right, we're risking 250. We've got about 830 bucks. So, okay. Probably question is, can it make 3D lows? That's a good question. All right. So now we're going to watch and see what we get to the downside here because this is our, you know, we're on a third run down. One, two. Here's our third run down. See it? Somewhere in here, I'm going to feel like even though it's um, you know, the same day. Yeah, I'm going to get a little itchy for an exit because I've been sitting on this for a long time and it's really volatile, right, Amanda? At some point, I'm like, uh, you know what? Is this the third time? Well, you know, on the third time, maybe it's a, it's. I, I'm going to pay attention because I might find an an opportunity 
to just walk away and take my money. So let's see what I get out of this. New lows, and of course, closing on the high. New lows. Pull back. Now, note that the bars are starting to congest. Down here. So yeah, probably decelerating. I don't know that it's over yet, but I, I noticed that the volatility is damping down. Amanda says it's going to pop up or pop down. It also might die with a whimper. It might literally go horizontal, right? Behavior is different as you break structure lower, first run down. Um, I mean, things don't look the same at this point. So we're on alert. Also, the, as I said, the crazy volatility has been squeezed out of this because fewer and fewer players are able to afford to play anymore, right? You'd be shocked, even though this has made lower lows and lower highs, the majority of this market lost money. I know that some, maybe that sounds shocking to you, but the majority of the people, because of the volatility, lost money in this market. Th these types of markets is what are what taught me to stay two swings back. Now, as you get a, f you know, a good amount of money in your trade, four to one, five to one, six to one, you're going to get more aggressive in taking profits, right? Especially if it gets to a logical profit target. So let's see what we get. We're still making new lows. Still making new lows. Okay, what do you think the market positions are right now? Other than hurt. Short or or out of money. So I have that in the back of my mind. That's okay because I'm, I am trading with the stream here. So we come down to this line of maximum excursion of these lows and test it once but close on our high. See that? Plunge and test this line of maximum excursion first time. And a pullback. So I draw in just a measure of speed, a line of maximum excursion. Hobbs, you were just wound up. Lay back down and relax, will you? Back to the line of maximum excursion. You can see my exit order right here. I'm thinking the nexus area, something like that. We're second time that we plunged and tested the LME pull back and you can see the noose getting tightened see it slowing down is it because the clothes on the highs are getting skittish no it's look at the change in what's going on we've gone from high volatility and back and forth motion and now we're getting small range bars and we're getting a plunge and pull back it, contracting lows. Thank you. It's a good description, Sharon. So there's my second plunge. You're getting squeezed. It's the third run. I'm actually not out yet. Watch. We've plunged lower. Here's our third run lower. When we close down here, see it? Here's our third run lower. See it? I don't want to be caught. If price gets back above here, I don't want to be involved. So 
I'm I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna have an order. I guess I didn't didn't put this out very well, but an order basically that if we get back above here, just just take me out. It's a it's a profit stop above the market, and it's really close to the market. See it? We're we've broken down below here, and if we're down below here. If it's going to make another run higher, I don't want to be involved. I want to get my money and walk away. Does that make sense? It's the third run down here. Okay. Plunge and break the LME. If it gets back above here, just take me out. I'm out. Okay, so I don't know. I don't even know how much it is. I don't remember anymore. My brain is addled. Now, it takes a lot of energy to, to do this. All right, so it's 1100 bucks. I think that's what that says. Yep, 250 to make 1100 So, I mean, there are e there's nothing wrong with 1100 bucks. There are easy that you've seen. There's easier $1,100 to be made in crude, but if you're willing to take this ride, this is what a rolling chop looks like. The key to it was getting out of the way and let everybody else get hurt. The majority of the people lost money on this trade. The only time they might make money on this trade is this short right here. But these sellers were probably selling the other two new lows as well and so the question is can they catch enough on this ride right here to pay for their other two losses um, Ouija says I think the last time I saw this type of tight exit was about two years back well, let me ask you a question Ouija how many times have you seen me take this many trades in one commodity back to back to back to back to back to back to back Aussie, yeah, Aussie last March, I think. Uh, you know, gold was just a smash. Now, I could have, um, Robbie's, you're, you're caught on these other lines, Robbie. I could have easily just done this. You're just dying about drawing new lines. It's really not about the lines. Robbie, I could have just used this as a target and got away with the same idea as we got close and just run away. Okay. This is not a, this is not about now the vol and also now the volatility has turned to nothing. You cleared your head in gold. Were you more smooth and rounded on crude so you could still trade it? Well, gold wasn't trading two ways back and forth like this. This gave me trade after trade after trade, right? Yeah, no, I for whatever reason, when I started trading, you're right, Amanda, I just walked in. I think more of it was that I walked into a market that somebody said, think less, draw more. Yeah. This is uh, get good trade location and get, uh, this honest to God, Perry, this is what it is. Yeah, sometimes people overdraw, right? How about this? This is get tra good, get a good idea, good, good good trade location, and try not to screw it up. That's what this is, and it, that's difficult sometimes. We all like to draw, but the extra volatility in this one. I'll show you one, Robbie, that would have worked really nice. Right there. And this is where the volatility changed. So if you notice the volatility change and you want to draw that in, that's fine. But overdrawing would have killed you, as would overtrading in this range. All right, so let's, so we've seen this market change character. Now it might be on its way down 
to 55 54 bucks right we don't know but the character of this market has gone from really volatile and as soon as people get in the stops get run now we've settled down can you see the change now that's subtle but if you think about the analogy of being in the stream we've gone from you know being in the rapids and we're moving from one side to the other as the mar we run against the rocks to all of a sudden we're in a pool of water that's more quiet right wouldn't the lower volatility attract the rats out again um i don't know but it makes me get out because it's a change and reassess what the market's doing it's not that i don't think the market's going to go lower it's not that I think the market's going to go higher. It's that, for me, it's a change, and it's it's a market change after that high volatility where we entered. I'll show you again. This is the same day. So after trading in this volatility, and now we're back to 10 pip bars, it makes me reassess where price is and what it's doing and I do notice that it's had a nice run against this down sloping maximum excursion line and now it's trying it to the upside looks like the market is narrowing starting to turn or pause I'm I'm more than happy to be out take my four to one and you know take a look there's remember how many trades have we seen in whatever three the three days that I've shown you? There's always another trade. It, you know, if you, <clears throat> if you hated this trade or if you got uh, stopped out at break even or if you even got, even lost one stop, the key was just stop trading until the market character changes. Now the market character's changed, so clear your mind forget about all this right don't care forget about it the water still wait for some ripples to emerge yeah don't the worst thing you can do is anticipate it you know what I mean John Don't project something that's not there. Wait for it to emerge. Okay. We make the low, now we're closing on a high, closing on a high, closing on a high, closing on a high. We've broken at least one swing high. I don't know if this is a, it wouldn't be a C point, but it, I don't know if this is the B point yet. How would I know if this is a B point? Well, how would I know if I found C? Tell me about C. No, it's not. What? Tell me about C, not when I'm ready to trade. Tell me about C specifically. C does have buyers around it. What else would actually tell me? Uh, maybe. Jorge says takes out the previous swing high. Maybe. But again, that's not C. That's confirmation of an up move. What would tell? What would? What would tell me C is in? Some sort of separation bar, mirror bar, nope. Higher low. Yeah, or maybe a last photon with a wide range bar higher, but most likely a higher low. Right? That would tell me this is C. This is A and this is C. Alright, so here we go.
that's that was written too early high or low that's a question mark okay this on this bar I can say we'll use this in a second ah here's C you see it comes down closes on its high closes on its high take a look it's a higher low so we'll put C in okay how do you work a median line you got a couple choices you can a trade the outer parallel if you like the stop and this stop is well below A you can B wait for a test retest it's up to you or wait for separation to the upside separation cost something what Matt says while wow, you're on fire you're working this fast because you're in tune with the market absolutely yeah I'm I, I'm in the stream swimming and you know I can feel the still water happen I can feel that makes me change my focus I reload you can just place your order at the line that's what I've done here you know I've got I don't know 25 20 30 stops sitting just from trading oil and and I feel like I you know I can I can feel these turns I don't often get to show you a series of trades one right after the other so you know just like we did in Aussie last year here you can go back and look at all of these in crude and just you know you're not going to catch everyone maybe but you can at least get a sniff of what I was looking at what gave me a clue Aussie was very much one-sided yes I think it was 15 trades two of them were counter trend but the rest of them they're all to the downside but this one is just it's just basically trading in a three buck range right but you can trade and trade and trade and trade and trade if you're was I was I the one turning this market I said what you're asking me Perry I, I don't know I am trading for the fund I'm not trading um, full out I mean I'm very under leveraged I don't think I you know I'm using the cash market as well as futures I I maybe I could get everything off but I'm not even bothering and with this many winners it doesn't matter because it's a fund it's not like I have to put every every there's only me and four clients so everybody just gets a dot you know a percentage of profit so <coughs> we're unleveraged we're less than unleveraged so if we have a let's say a 10 billion or a hundred billion dollar position we have more cash than that for every ten dollars we might have one dollar in position does that make sense follow where I'm what I'm saying it's the opposite of how most people trade that's what unleveraged means yes I have more money in the in the account than the position size but you know with a this rate of return or sorry with this um, with this risk reward that we're that we're grabbing on every trade and also the number of stops are rolling forward it doesn't matter we're still going to end up with you know lots of do re mean and again I just started trading the fund in June. My goal is to make, you know, 25, 
trading like this, it shouldn't be a hard task. We'll see. All right, so this is let's let's now let's pay attention to what's going on. So the market, the water stilled or got very quiet. Then we got a pullback, and maybe it took one swing out. I'm not sure if it took two out. And the key is, if it leaves the higher low, then I've seen C, and I can draw in A, B, C, right? Everybody with me? And this last bar convinced me that I have seen a higher low. I can simply leave orders at the outer parallel and I like that because just like as a, up above we had a door I think we'll find buyers down here if we get down here it'll be just like the door it's the nature of those two bars that close on the high that made you like it too right um, it's that this is the confirmation double bottoms like and two the close on the high that tell me hey okay this is it's a high probability that the this low is in and it's higher than this low okay they're trying to get down to this low and did they this is not happening now you can wait for confirmation confirmation would be a close above here right make sense but that's up to you. Maybe you don't want to put your orders until you see that. <coughs> profit target. What's a logical profit target? Double the range. And watch where double the range comes from. It's the same trading day. So I know where my entry was at, right? That's the range. This whole run down. No. See it? Now, you, if you just get the range, take it, right? That's a no-brainer. Uh, why the whole run and not the change in volatility? This is the door. It's from, you know, the door to the still water. Now, if you can just catch this, it's 1100 bucks. Make sense? It's not going to fix itself. Okay, so. You must have seen a big pane of glass happening that made you think of the huge flowering possibility. Well, okay. What's, okay, Ouija, uh, Ouija, I need you to rate the possibility of trading over here. Scale of 0 to 5. And also, can you, can you rate the short after the door happened. Everybody, uh, they want the Ouija rating. This one he says 3.5. You wanna see a little bit more before you wait? Oh, Matt, oh, Matt says, I saw the short, but this long is tight. Well, watch a few more bars then. I'll show you. 
Okay, so if you can just run the swing, it's eleven hundred bucks. So we go to the low of the pool. We know where the high is. And remember, you're likely to be able to hide your profit stop, right? I, I don't expect this to go up in one bar. Can you see that volatility has normalized? Until it changes, I'm going to assume volatility is going to remain normal now, which means we're going to see side, you know, two-sided action. So I should be able to hide stops, which and if I can hide stops, that allows me. Hang on, Robbie. If I can, oh, I got to get my thought back again. All right. If it's two-sided and the volatility is normalized and it leaves swings back and forth that allows me to buy profit stops which allows me to think about these higher targets it doesn't mean that it's gonna go there but it does mean I can try and lock in profits and if it does go there I can make a decision of whether or not I want to lock in the profit or let it run but it gives me kind of a hey if this thing takes off here's a pie in the sky like area right it's kind of it's kind of it's a it, it's like an ultimate I don't know I have a word for it I, I'm, I'm not very uh, I'm not a good wordsmith today but if I can put in profit stops I can buy the, th the thought of these logical profit targets that are home runs it's a home run thank you Weezy I can only do that if I can run profit stops. Does that make sense? If it gets ultra volatile, I have to take I have to take my profit because the volatility is likely to knock me out. If it stays with the normal volatility and has pauses now and then, it, it allows me to build mature structure and put in profit stops. So, all right, so <clears throat> Matt says, I don't know if I can see this one. So now watch. I've already got my order in, but Matt, you can still afford another bar, right? All right, so maybe you're not ready to trade. So you can still afford another bar, right? Look at the go-no-go. -no -go. Maybe you're not ready to trade. I'm not long yet. Okay, now I'm long. But maybe you're not ready to trade. Here's the test, right? So you can still buy another bar, Matt. Okay, now you've got separation, right? Do you like it now? Okay, well, you can try and squeeze out here. You can also, you've got multiple bottoms here, and there's a major close on the median line right here. So you've got two possibilities right there. And it depends on how aggressive you are. The more aggressive you are, the more likely you, get, you are to get filled, okay? Follow me, Matt? Okay, so you, you'll you have to decide where you want to put your order, whether you want to put it on the median line parallel or whether you want to put it on this shelf. It's up to you. Let's see what happens. Doesn't matter, you would have gotten filled, okay? And it closes on the high. You okay with that? Now do you think you would have seen it? Okay, so Ouija gives us a three and a half. Okay, Ouija says now it's a four.
Now, we don't have a close above here. Let's see what happens if you're waiting for that confirmation. Well, there's your confirmation above here. So was there anybody that was on the fence post, but now that it's closed up here, they want to get in? Okay, is there anybody that thinks this is folly? All right, let's see what happens. So we we leave multiple tops up here. We're inside the blue median line. Look at what time it is. It's mid-afternoon. Did the stop have to be all the way to the low? What about the higher low as a stop once we got separation? Uh, once we got separation, yeah, I mean, that's up to you. If you, if you were willing to put your stop underneath here, you know, th then you've got entry all the way over to here. Scotty, absolutely. Okay. That, that's absolutely the secondary trade. Sure. So, and you'd be filled. So let's call this the secondary trade. Stop underneath here. Amanda says, I like it. Okay, so maybe you didn't see it here. Maybe you did see it here. Maybe you saw it here and you didn't get filled. Or maybe you saw it, but you didn't like it till this confirmation. All right, you can play here with a stop underneath C, right? Sure. Amanda says, I liked it below. Okay, well, wherever you liked it, but there's three or four ways in in 10 bars, right? Lots of different ways to work this median line. All end up in the same area. Long. Okay, so let's see if it pays off. So we close on our low just below the outer parallel. Now, I know some of you get a little nervous about closes outside the median line, but... This is a relatively steep median line. It's also getting later in the day, and a lot of people have lost a lot of money. This is that same day that we got short. Okay? A lot of people lost a lot of money in this market. Even though it went down four and a half stops or 1,100 points, 110 points, a lot of people lost a lot of money in that 110 points. So at the end of the day, they're, they're not as likely to be frisky. Does that make sense? This, this is where a lot of active traders, at the end of the day, they're just like, you know what, screw it. Look what I did to my account. I, I had three losing, they're emotionally out of, and out of money as well yeah I've had three losing trades today and it really hurt and I don't want to play anymore so it really tampen, tamps down the volatility and instead of having sometimes on these closes we get these wild swings we kind of go out with a whimper on these days generally we'll see how this day goes out but if we go out with a whimper are we likely to stay within this median line we're likely to slide, right? So I would be tempted to anchor it off the number two drive down instead of the third drive to reduce the angle. Okay, well, you can do that. I'll, I'll show you what, you, well, yeah, you could also do this. Al says, well, well let's, let's, let's watch, let's watch, it's still within the median line. I'm going to go to your suggestion when it's necessary, Al. And I'll mark the session close. Okay, so now we start to slide outside. See it? You could do a couple things. You could try and draw a new median line, but here's a real no-brainer. If you, if, you, if you just want, maybe you don't care because you're working on structure, but if you want to feel better, here's the modified shift. 
right? It's okay. I mean, it does a fairly good. It does well on the tail. It does okay here. And right now, we're basically it's giving us the probable path of price, right? Make sense? And for the life of me, I don't remember what this is. Let's take a look. Oh, I, okay. So it's the. This is the modified shift right here. The AC. All right, so let's see what happens as we go into the end of the day. So I, you have to ask yourself, is price ho just going horizontal or is it widening at the end of the day? I mean, by horizontal, is it changing directions or is it just widening at the end of the day? I think it's just widening at the end of the day, but let's watch. Okay, we'll leave a low but close on our high. Work our way back up and all right, so now we close. We pop this top and close up here. You could think about a profit stop, but take a look. It doesn't actually buy you anything better than break even, doesn't it? It's it's got this is it's got a box but it doesn't help you. Do you see why? Now, if you just wanted to reduce your risk, let me say this. If your stop is down here or your stop is down here and you see this break above and you just want to reduce your risk, but you don't feel comfortable going to break even, okay, then go ahead and go underneath this box. Follow me? So you're reducing your risk, but you're not at break even. Especially the secondary entry people. All right. Close on our highs. That's nice, right? Day's not over. Uh, a bit of more volatility. I mean, we're not not that we're going anywhere, but just back and forth volatility. And I mean back and forth. Okay, so I just wonder if this AB is worth a median line. I'm looking for the probable path of price. Day's not over yet. It does look rangy at the moment. Yep. I don't disagree. But that's okay with this as long as the range doesn't get broken by very much to the downside, right? The, its range is okay. We want it to break out of the range to the upside. It's going to restore its energy if it's in a range. That's okay with us. All right. So we make a new high. So we're still making higher highs and higher lows. See it? That's the close of the day. Okay, nice close. Unfortunately, it's not three to one for you. you if you are, if this is a day trade for you, you should have a you know market on close order, or you should be watching the close and just get out on the close. And you know you you're going to end up with uh, a stop and a half, something like that, right? nothing wrong with that if you just say you know what I don't want I don't like holding it overnight I just want my money okay take your money it's fine you got you got long somewhere around 58 ish and you know you're getting out 35 40 points nothing wrong with that it's three more than three hundred dollars less than four hundred dollars it's not bad okay let's see what happens or if you decide to hold it overnight Volatility remains high. We're at the upper parallel. 
climbing along the median line and then break above the upper parallel put in the warning line one bar reversal but right back at you starting to look horizontal again okay now we're at the lower parallel looking for a high and looking for a low kind of looks like we have a box going now doesn't it now it's four o'clock in the morning <coughs> some <coughs> excuse me some of you are awake or some of you are not awake I'm I'm during this late in the run I'm now actually getting up at three again I'm finally back in the swing of things so I have had breakfast and uh, taking Hobbs out and now I'm with the talking to the gray beards and watching it and okay so it respected the lower parallel again that's fine but still looks rangy okay there's our box goes vertical now first chance to go better than break even I mean it's not much only about 10 pips 13 pips but you know it's better than break even and it's built on structure right it's the it's the breaking out of the box so we went horizontal now we're going vertical so these profit stops allow me to try and play for the home runs do you follow me now if this turns into a rolling chop I'm probably gonna get chopped but these profit stops allow me to try and keep pushing the edge here now it looked like it was gonna pull back and turn down see it see how I marked it I thought okay this is probably an important high we made this low and then immediately blow through it I marked this with gray because this is let me write it down this bar right here which seemed it looked like it was about to do that horizontal and then move and instead it's only a one bar pullback and then right back at it so we went horizontal sorry vertical a little bit of a pullback and then right back at you if you're just using profit stops why are you still interested in the 3d lines and not just the swing highs and swing lows I don't understand the question Aaron Well, do you see a fresh median line now? When we blew here, blew through here, I went. Um, I don't know that I need another median line. We, I won't need another median line unless we go horizontal, right? If we go horizontal, I'll probably look at another median line. Uh, maybe not to the downside. It might also be to the upside because I'm going to want to know what the probable path of price is. But right now we're vertical. And in vertical, the median line's not going to do me any good. So I'll let price do what it's going to do. If it builds mature structure, then I'll worry about slope lines. But at the moment, I can just box in profits and let it do what it's going to do. Which is continue to go vertical there's there's nothing to draw here right we're in outer space make sense okay so starting to look a little vertical right I mean horizontal 
slowing down a little. Try and get through that gray line and no. And finally we pop so we've got this low, this high, and we can just box in again now. And now you can see our profit stops are taking us away a long ways away from our entry so we no longer we no longer have to even think about you don't have to think about am I gonna make money it's a question now of just managing the trade I'm gonna use a term and I don't mean this in a negative fashion this is you're now in in literally this territory and it's a question you need to ask yourself what do you want out of this trade? If you've decided to hold it overnight and it's New York morning, do you want to just keep boxing? Yeah, Gina says, I want to just get profit stopped out. Okay. Oh, Al said that. Gina said, this is where I would meet greed. Okay, so Gina, so here's the deal. You have your choice. You can either profit stop or the prior high I believe is 59.23 you can just have a, a resting order still making new highs Okay, we'll leave a high and pull back. Immediately pop out. Now, at this point, these are relatively smaller swings. I'm not. I'm going to be slow to scoot up my profit stops, right? Because I can I can afford the luxury of letting it run. You may decide, you know what? I'm gonna I've got thousand dollars in this. I'm gonna snug it up immediately because that's enough for me, right? Follow me. This is up to you. Al says that's me. Al says I want to lock in profit up here. Okay, so you can be aggressive. After having lived through the fear of overnight volatility, I'd like double many ranges as a paycheck payback. Then stay a couple swings back. <coughs> if you feel like I, you know what, I sat through overnight volatility, so I want a big paycheck. Paycheck. Then stay a couple swings back. You're no matter what happens, you're still going to get 500 bucks right here. But you may be paying for. By staying back, you may have guaranteed yourself $500, but open up the possibility of 2000 Follow me? Or you might be like Al and say, if this pulls back at all, I just want my money. Just give me my 800 bucks or 900 bucks. So here's how I view what's in front of us. This is mature structure, and it's the base before we went vertical. See it? So I can mark some minor swings up here, but this is, I'm going to lean on this until we either find a door up here, and then I'm going to probably scooch in, or until we go vertical and then horizontal again. But right now, this is the base for me. That's me. You could be up here if you want, Al. I wouldn't be here, but you could be here. Making new highs. Now make a high, close on our low. Close on our low. Close on our low. This don't look the same to me, right? Al's, Al's getting nervous. Me, 
I'm thinking about this base, but Al's getting nervous. I'm willing to sit to here. I know it seems like a lot, but that's okay. Al says, just take me out and give me my money. Okay, you're out, buddy. And it's a nice run, okay? And we stop and turn. And when we do this, this looks like a good B, C to me, Aaron. Well, I thought I was going to find it. All right, fine. If I can find it, I'll show it to you. That's a writing, huh? Yes. So, and this goes, this low is the original A point. So it's a long tail. But actually, if you even if you anchored it at, over in here, it gives you basically the same slope. And by the way, if you if you do a modified shift, you'll find watch this. Ain't no big deal. See it? So that tells you if you want a median line, this is the median line. You can shift it you can change the lows you're still going to get a similar slope when you draw those in Tim do you have to squeeze out again to anchor the a pivot um yeah I'd have to go grab the a pivot sure but uh, Robbie I'm not it let me just give you a piece of advice here okay okay take care Al let me give you a piece of advice here it's the BC that makes me interested in the median line. It's not, okay, I've got an A, let me find a BC. It's, it's when I see things go horizontal and can mark out a quality BC. Okay, I'll, you can even draw it manually which is put in the BC and I say where's the A and then bisect it so I'll go back to grab the logical A but it's not to actually look at the picture it's this is what made me draw the median line when I found the C the B makes sense it's horizontal I'm just looking for the probable path of price because it's either upsloping and going to follow this or it's going to take my profit stop and, and run. Does that make sense? Al got profit stopped right here. Which is too close for me. You guys follow me? Aaron, you follow me? What is the logic that makes you think it will go up and not reverse? The logic is, Aaron, ready? The logic is, we have a horizontal section. I draw on the median line. If the median line gets busted, I'm, it's going to reverse. It's either the probable path of price or it's turned. Now, good luck drawing a downsloping median line here. Sharon says, this is where practice comes in because this is the, re the remorse when you get profit stopped out. Well, I don't have any remorse, Sharon. Any way you look at it, I got money, right? This is another winner in the streak for me. Um, I'll hit a profit target or I'm going to get profit stopped out. I don't care. John says the point is you're managing a trade, not looking for an entry. That is the point. We are in the managing section, okay? So when we go horizontal... For me to manage it, I have to know the probable path of price. If we take out this lower parallel, dude, we're going right here. 
and I'm probably not going to survive. But we're going to we're going to go back to this low. Does that make sense? We're going to go back to the base. And you know, I have some chance of surviving, but it's I don't think it's particularly high. The high probability is if it stays with the median line. So we'll see what happens. We're at the median line. So I'm th I think this is new mature this C is new mature structure. You would move your stop profit stop when it takes out the high. Yeah, new mature structure. So if we take out this high and which is also breaking the median line, I'll probably snug up. If someone was looking for a new trade, they might short this shoulder to the base. If someone was looking for a new trade, they might short this shoulder. Ooh, I don't think so. I don't think that's a high probability trade. Does this look like a door to you? I don't think it's been tested enough. Also, look what happens when you try and draw, draw a down slipper, Aaron. See it? I try and dry, draw in a down sloper and I get an up sloper. The mathematical probabilities are telling you, hey, dude, it's okay to take your profits, but it, getting short, nah, not so sure. So probably not something you want to do. We've taken out a couple of minor swings that that's what could tempt you maybe to think the top might be in. Robbie, that's true. And that's why you want a profit stop, whether it's here or here, okay? That is true. But we don't have enough here. This does not look like a run lower yet. And if you think this is confirmation and a move to the low, go back and take a look at the short trades that we made in this series and this doesn't look like it at all very useful technique to draw the uh, to draw the median line every time I feel like a short yeah or hey if you draw, try and draw a down sloping median line it gives you an up sloping median line it's telling you wake up wouldn't these fresh buyers forming this swing dissuade you from shorting you will it would me Sharon I was trying to find the small distinctions that prevent this from you thinking it's a top it seems like a possible top. Yeah, it is a possible top, Aaron, but it's not it's it's not even enticing to me to get out of my long and get short. It is enticing enough that I'm going to measure, okay, where is my risk because we're horizontal. This is what's important to me, not this high, this high. What's important to me is we're horizontal. We're going to break out of horizontal to the upside or the downside. The upside is all good. I'm going to make money. The downside, where's my risk? Follow me? I only have to be worried if it breaks the downside. The pullbacks in this market are relatively shallow. This pullback from the high didn't go too far down. Not yet. As far as I'm concerned, you know, if you take me out here, my whole opinion will change of this. Now I'm asking for a lot to the upside. Don't don't get me wrong. This is a big move, which means I have to stay a few swings back. I have to be patient. At the median line, you have to. I really have to stay smooth and rounded, right? So we're at the median line, but we still haven't broken it. Now we're above the median line. And when we finally break away from it, okay, now I'll move up. You can see it's almost the same profit stop as Al's, but by being patient and waiting for confirmation, I'm underneath new market structure. We've now formed market structure.
and I think these I think these are new buyers it is the biggest pullback so far and it's hard to sit through a pullback this large but remember it's only a portion of your profits but if you want to play for a big move up you need to be several back and live through a horizontal section as long as it doesn't take out what you mark as the major structure okay and sometimes you will get profit stopped out at that major structure but remember what the word I just said profit stopped if we can put in those profit stops then we can afford to look for the home run at this point do you have a profit order in? no I do not I have an idea but I don't have a profit order in. I have a territory that I'm looking for and my idea is as as Al said earlier I just going to get profit stopped out but I'm gonna be slow to move my until I so double the range of this last BC uh, double the range of it's really double the range of the short that we took it's double that range is my is the idea I have I mean I get there but all right so up up and away looking for a top might have found one well my office just let me know that our broker dealer just showed up for a surprise to audit Ooh, we're honest but always unnerves us a bit as they love to find something okay David when you gotta go you gotta go I've been through them and um, you're right they just they love to find something how long have those coffee grounds been in there you know they they need to find something for their report I agree so I'm no, I no longer get audited but I used to all right so you can see it go horizontal again see it but rather than worry just remember you've got a profit stop set let me change Al's to pink because it's not one I used rather than worry just remember you that's okay you I got my profit stop in it's okay I found a top if I find a bottom that's actually a good thing because that allows me to continue to move my profit stops higher that's how I box in profits right you're not gonna see this anywhere else well I'm sure at some point someone will start copying out of the internet but you're not gonna see anybody else teach this at the moment because no one else knows how to do this except for the people here that have paid attention so we leave a low and we're in danger also of sliding outside of this median line and then we start to head higher now again you could slide here if you want I'm a little reluctant I'm not grabbing this high but I just I just want you know I want a lot out of this trade so I'm I'm a little slow to move my profit stop and you see it paid off you saw Al move quick it's not that he didn't make a lot of money it's just that I'm still alive so I'm not sure that that high that I want is in that's gonna bring in new buyers so then we leave a low watch what happens and look at the volatility start to pick up we get a head stander so I put in the line of maximum excursion see it and I'm starting to think that if there's going to be mature structure this is mature structure forming right here the next level of mature structure and we're outside of the median line by the way and it's it's 10 in the morning next shelf yeah that's a way to think of it now we get close on the high open on the low close on the high what's the clue that this could be mature structure forming well it's straight horizontal see it and it pushes right outside the probable path of price it just 
stops and moves sideways, Robbie. And so what happens when we move sideways? What's wh What are we in? Or congestion or a range, right? And where are we going, Robbie, when we're in a range? Yeah, time and space are equal. Where are, where are we going, Robbie? Well, we are going vertical, but which way? 50-50, David, is right. We're going one way or the other. So that's what tells me that it's probably the next mature structure. How will I know? When it breaks out to the upside or the downside. If it breaks out to the downside, I'm probably going to get stopped out. breaks out to the upside, I can move my profit stop, right? So in a certain sense, I like the pullback because it's going to set up my box. Okay, so you can see us try and get lower. I, th I, I was a little bit uncomfortable about putting my profits up underneath here, but then I saw this high and then a... This is the key for me. Does this make sense? It's a higher low in this pullback sequence. Price leaves a higher low. See that? Here to here. And then takes out the high. So now, I think this is mature structure, and if we break it, I'm willing to be profit stopped out there. That's fine. But I still am willing to let it run. I'm just going to keep following it up, right? And the median line is there, but I really, I'm, I don't really care about it anymore. Now it's a, it, at the moment it's a game of structure. It's boxes. We make a new high. Start to pull back. So looking for a high. Leave a low. Bust the low. So this probably is a high, right? Make sense? So, just so that when you watch the tape, make sense? Scotty says this looks like a top and shoulder. Okay. I don't like it. Um, well, it tells me your profit stops in the right way, in the right place, because we're coming to visit you, buddy. So I'm either going to get survive or I'm going to get profit stopped out. If this is the shoulder and we're on the way down, guess what happens to me? can't guess yeah I get profit stopped out it doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me in the least that's what profit stops are for right uh oh here it comes can you feel it it's almost noon are you, are you nervous Why? Your profit stops right there.
if your profit stop gets hit, I think you got 1500 bucks in it, Matt. So just just sit there and smile. Right? No, you don't have to be a pig. Just sit there and smile. Any projection that you would have made about the high would have been too low at this point. How about that? Let me, let me, if that makes you feel any better. I could have projected anything as a high, but anything I projected would have been too low. We'll go back and see what double that range was. But So I'm just boxing it in and enjoying the ride. The ride will end. Okay, I thought it was going to come get me. Well, maybe it's leaving a lower high. So Scotty's saying, we'll see. Scotty's saying, isn't this the top? And isn't this the shoulder? And isn't this the weak reaction? Might be, didn't tempt me to take a short. But maybe on another day, I would. You know, maybe this is a trade I missed. We'll see where that goes. Well, maybe I, maybe I would have, Ouija says I can't take this trade because I'm long. Maybe I would have stopped in reverse, but I don't see this. So more than one person here is seeing this. Maybe it's there. Maybe I just didn't see it. I still don't see it. I mean, in the sense that I still didn't see it. I can see where you can project that, and I can see where it's a possibility. But I'm busy boxing in profits, right? I still can't draw down. Well, now I can finally, actually, I can finally draw in a down slope median line. I was going to say I still can't draw. This is the first down sloping median line I can draw. And there it is right there. That's the first one you can draw. Other than w r way back at the very beginning of the move. You could have put in opposing median lines. The very first down sloper that shows up. So maybe this top isn't. Well, yeah, you could, well, yeah, you could draw this one as well. Well, if I, okay. Robbie, you need to think before you ask questions. How would that have helped you? you you're drawing way too fast, buddy. Draw with a purpose. How would this meeting line have helped you? You would have got short and stopped out, right? These are big swings. Slow down and wait. Well, I wouldn't have known it in advance. Well, you're drawing too fast. This thing is in a monster up move. You got to give it a little bit of do. Robert says, okay, until I draw it and let price unfold, you don't know. Okay, you're drawing too fast. You're projecting too fast. If this minor pullback tells you that the move is over, you're drawing too fast, dude. You're projecting too fast. It's a minor pullback. Actually, let me ask you a question, Robbie. Ready? As we're right here for this BC, see it? 
put the landing for you. Where is the swing low? Um, one second. Got it. Okay. The swing low is over here. So we're, we're nowhere even near a swing low. So why? Well, you know what? I don't have any more time to argue with you. You're not listening to me. When you watch the tape, pay attention to where the swing low is. Drawing here is a waste of time and energy. Drawing, drawing here, I'm okay with that. We've taken out a swing. First true down sloping median line worth drawing. Let's see what happens to it. Looks good. Violated a little, but looks good. But now, let me let me just take out the lines for a second. I'll leave in the BC, and you'll see it without the median line. It's a different picture. Without this median line, what the median line is, it looks like a down move, doesn't it? With the median line gone, it looks horizontal, doesn't it? The man says it looks horizontal with an upside bias. Okay, so if you're in this trade, let me squeeze in enough that we can see our structure. So we've got a horizontal and then a resume in the upside. Our structure's down here. I know we've retraced them, but really what we have is horizontal structure. This is, Gina says, this is why I'm asking myself, how do I know we are moving into horizontal versus trend change? It depends on what you're trading for, Gina. Okay, and it all goes back to something I said earlier on in the move, which is how much is enough? First of all, if you didn't take this trade overnight, you're not going to get long. And you may be monitoring this for a short. And this is the first even vaguely possible setup for a short in that whole run up. Two full cents, okay? You watch it go horizontal. And in general, Gina, think of it this way. It's horizontal with major structure underneath. Have you thought about it that way? It's not just horizontal. It's horizontal with major structure underneath. Now, there's a difference. If you're not in this market and you're not swimming in the stream, there's a difference. You might be aggressive in this area if you're not already trading. Because you might be thinking it's going horizontal and I think it'll go down. But if you're in the stream and thinking about this, you've got major structure here and we've gone, we've gone horizontal above the major structure I'm willing to let it go horizontal and then see if it breaks out to the downside and takes me out because what happens if it goes horizontal and breaks out to the upside? I've got an even bigger move up, right? Yeah, so I'm willing to sit underneath the major structure let horizontal form if it takes out horizontal to the downside I'll get profit stopped if it takes horizontal to the upside exactly right Scotty I get to move my profit stop up and we're in a new leg higher okay so it's 
this is the hard this is hard okay this is why I'm a you know I'm surgical at money management because I can I know when to sit back and when to get aggressive but you know I'm okay with the pullback as long as I'm underneath major structure right it's a balancing act it is as I said this is the first down sloping median line you could draw but if you're not drawing with a purpose again let me show you just what just drawing in the median line casually can do to you it's turned a sideways movement and maybe even a sideways with upside potential into you're thinking it's a downtrend just because you can draw a median line sure I'll zoom out for you can you can you see there are no places to get short we've gone horizontal but it's not a place to get short yet well the median if the median lines fulfilled its purpose but you wouldn't have made any money right Matt would you have made three to one on this? You'd be lucky if you made one to one on this. I'm gonna leave in the BC so we just remember and we'll look at it. Let's let it play out. And yeah, I get it. This is a big horizontal section, right? Amanda says she likes it as an opportunity to get long. I'm saying I would have thought, okay, that median line's done and it could go up as well now. Yeah, that's fine. All I'm saying to you and is if you got caught with thinking top shoulder weak reaction, you'd be hard pressed to get the break even on this one, unfortunately, guys. But I do think it's a valid thought, especially if you're not in the market. Long because long because of the structure below. That's right. Are you caught, Hobbs? Hang on, I'll fix you up. There you go. Hobbs Hobbs is back. Hobbs has entered the room, for good or for bad. Mom, I have to go. Come here. It's construction. Yeah, it's not week. It's construction. Three months here at the house. So. All right. Very interesting to see how it reacts to the high. So am I, Amanda. I want to know is it over am I caught in a rain now again it's noon now it's okay got my profit stop in let's see what happens say so we're testing the high holds peak above the high I'm not willing to call that a victory yet and a close cl closes below it closes below it now you can see why I don't Look at those brief pokes over top, over the top says, looks ugly, ugly as in going back down or just messy. You want to get short, Amanda? Oh, okay. So. I mean, maybe this is the door. Maybe this is it. You know, you sell in the shoulder of the weak reaction, you probably would have stopped out, but maybe this is the door. We'll see. Volatility has, well, I don't know if volatility's picked up, but it's it's gone. it's gotten more chaotic. How about that? Rolling chop, also possible. Everything's possible. I mean, it's it's gotten more chaotic. And this horizontal area is still in play. See it? So let me put this in place now. It was the first down sloping median line, but did nothing for you. Because we're still playing above major structure. Now, we're either going to make this major structure by taking out the highs, or the game's over. We'll see. So we're at the door. Okay, now that we've closed with good separation above the door, 
we got this pullback. You got several. All right, so we got several opportunities, several different ways to, to trade this, okay? And I'm going to let you decide how you would trade this. You could say, you know what? This is the pullback. And if it takes out this first pullback, just let me take my money. That's one way. With me? You could be underneath here if you want. That's less aggressive. You could be here. That's more aggressive. So we're now making new highs. Looking good, right? It pulls back. You can see the pause. But you, you sh at this point, you should have a taste of money in your mouth. You got a lot of money. It's almost like uh, a raw nerve getting rubbed. You're starting to pay attention because the movements have become chaotic, right? We look like we're trying, sat through a lot of horizontal. There you go. There, we just said it better than I could have. I just sat through a lot of horizontal. I need to get paid. So if it's not going to break to the upside and run, I want to get my money out of the market, right? I want to give it, give it the opportunity to run, but if it's not going to, then I want my money. Honey. All right. So, ah, and you're like, ah, crap, really? Looks like I'm about to get profit stopped out. That's okay. It's a lot of money. Take a look. 87 versus miss it by a tick aye, aye, aye. <laughs> you know what I can't make it up guys it's too strange to make up sometimes when you're on a run you're on a run I'd start to go into the church after that one. Well, we're not out yet. Actually, I mean, that's an impressive bar. Ouija says, it never ceases to amaze me. This type of very close stop um, just gets missed by a tick or two time after time. Yeah, that's why the studies that we did about volatility and how to play stops are so, it's so important. If you guys, if you if you have that video, you went to that seminar, you should study that, study that, study that, study that, because so many times you get, this is the kind of action that you get. You, if your stop's in the right place, the buyers are there, and they just save you, okay? But I know this is an impressive-looking bar. Don't lose sight. It's not like it took these highs out, right? It's just that we were in danger and we're no longer in danger, right? We still don't have our money out. And it is not making new highs. We just didn't get stopped out down here yet. But it, it looks damn impressive, doesn't it? And if you're watching it live, you're like, Oh, thank you. Right? All right. So, and we get some follow through. We're right at the highs. It's taking out 15 bars to move, yeah. Okay, new high. Now, so we're in a sprint again, right? I don't know what that word was. Let's call it a pullback. And know that, by the way, if you, if in the back of your mind you're wondering, no, this isn't me buying to protect my position. This is near the end of the trading day, yeah. It's 4.30, almost 4.30 when that bar happens. This is not me. 
Um, this is, it might be people settling their positions. There are times when I do manipulate the market, but that's not what I'm doing here. I'm just, you know what, to be honest with you guys, these trades have been, the last two weeks have been so much fun. I'm just, I'm just enjoying them. I'm just smiling. I'm really just enjoying them. Can the market see your profit stop order? No. That's what the gray beards are for. Okay. This, what do you think this is? Double to double, yeah. You can take your money here if you want. No worries. That's double. I think that's double the range. Ouija says this vertical move up looks about time to get out. All right, so let's see. Let's see how this plays out. I'm going to give you several opportunities. Here's one: profit stop, and you leave it, and you almost got profit stopped out, but you didn't. Okay. Two. Let's let's check out what this is. Yep, that's what it is. That's double the double right there. See it? Old range, double the range. Okay? Two, take your money at double the double. Amanda says, I'm out. Okay, it's fine. Ouija, you out? Have to. Okay. <clears throat> other opportunity, other one is, I've got a profit stop in. This allows me to buy a further move up if it happens. Oh, it's a magnificent. If you trade, if you got out here, it's a magnificent trade. Yeah, absolutely. Take the trade. Done. No problem. Let's see what happens. Flirting with the art. And remember, we're the only one that's looking at double the range. That's Archimedes. We're the only one we're looking at this stuff. Can you see the see it go horizontal? It goes vertical, it goes horizontal. See it? Vertical pause, then a re, then a re, resume. So I was going to say resume, then a resume in the up move. So this is structure, isn't it? In a weird way. So let's see what we get. Look at it go. So I'm going to back up. Anybody else willing to leave their profit stop here? Pretend that you don't know it's going higher. And not take your profit at double the range. Because you know what? You're catching a big chunk of it one way or the other. I'm just showing you several, you, several ways to skin this thing. That, there's no right or wrong answer here, okay? On any given trade, one way would work better than the other, okay? You're going to have to choose. If I had made it that far, I would be out, but thanks for showing us the rest of the story. Yep, well, yeah, you need to see the rest of the story because, look, staying back behind major structure is how you got to here, right? Make sense? Okay, so I love to see it, but the verticality of it will be taking money. Great. I, I'm glad, you know, there's 
handful of you that are adamant about it, I would take my money. Look, I hope I can get you to the point where you're in these trades and stay back and then see the verticality and go, you know what? Uh, thank you for this. And now that it's gone vertical, I'll just be taking my money and going away. Right? I'm good. I'm good with that. Nothing wrong with that. Let's 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 follow this swing out and be done though. So we get vertical, then we pause, then we remove, and we, then we resume in the up move. So this becomes structure. So by sitting through this small section right here, as soon as it resumes to the upside. You can move your profit stop from here to here. That way, if it goes even higher, you really haven't given anything away and you're going to participate in it. How about that? Maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't. Doesn't work every time, but Hobbs doesn't like it. Okay, so we. Are, we're moving higher, but we're not moving straight higher. But we're we're making look. We're in 61.45 now, so we're a set higher. How about that? We're thousand dollars higher. In now it is overnight. That's another reason you might want to take your money right here. This is the end of the day. This is the next morning. Rest of the story, by the way, overnight risk. Okay. So this save combined with this was the the prior double the range and it's vertical and it's overnight might certainly make you go you know what no matter what I'm taking my money okay I'm fine with that so if you sat with it overnight it's gone vertical again you've got a profit stop in pulling back you're looking for a low to move your profit stop to again. Lots of vertical, lots of horizontal again. Okay, I connected this low back to this low, and then projected it backward. Took a look at it, and thought, you know, that looks. I like that. that I like that. So that tells me probably. This is structure in here, but we'll see. Got to take a top out first. All right. So now if you're aggressive, you can lock in your profit right here. The worst that happens to you is 6120. That's a lot of money. That's another opportunity. Pulling back, retesting that bottom. Sorry we're going so long, but this is a big trade. Out. If you moved up aggressive. If you stayed back here, the area gets tested. And we go vertical again, but start to pull back. And now even I'm getting nervous. It's really horizontal in here, right? It's wild. It's really, it's chaotic. I mean, we're, we're up higher, but it's chaotic. So when the bars get wild again, my profit stops here. I'm fine with that getting hit, but by the same token, I don't know. It's starting to. I'm start. Well, I didn't really think the best way to say. It. I'm starting to feel like a pig. It's chaotic, and I kind of feel like it more than met my expectations. Is there a logical way out of this? So I put in a line of maximum excursion. I'm either going to get profit stopped out or hit it at the line of. Hello. Hang on, my instant froze. Do, 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 do. Maybe uh, Hobbs bit the cord.
Come on, Ensign. There we go. And I probably stopped out. So I'll run it forward, and you can see I would have got pro one way or the other. I would have got profit stopped out. So let's squeegee it in, so to speak. And now it looks like a door, doesn't it? That looks like a door. I hadn't done this, but. Could be. Anyway, let's squeeze it in. Great profit if you if you just took it right here. That's magnificent. Hey, even if you got profit stopped out, um, or Al did here, it's just it's tons of dough. Let's take a look. So uh, something like this. Eleven hundred bucks here. $2,500 there. So if you went just to the target, that's, I mean, what a magnificent trade, huh? Yes, it was two days, but it was a magnificent trade. So it's 10 to 1. If you got the whole shebang, it's 3700 I think I ended up about 3500 but okay, take care, Nikolai. And watch the recording. I'll get it up as fast as I can. A um, lot to learn in here. So that's what it looks like squeezed in. But, you know, whether it's, whether your profit target's right here or when it just goes horizontal, um, one thing I, I do want you to done, done, excuse me. One thing I do want you to do is go back and look at the section where we find the first downsloping median line and it's a horizontal section, but by drawing in a median line, you impose a direction on a market. And it's, it's, a, it's a false supposition caused by, it's not, it's not that, but remember, it's not the price didn't go from the upper parallel down to the median line. It did, but that didn't help you at all, right? So the median line did what it was supposed to do, but that's why we have to draw with a purpose. And you know, in my in my book when I did the work in 2001 through 2003, one of the things I wrote when I did those I don't know 23 or 27 pages of every single alternate pivot median lines in the S and B's, 87% of the time it went from all line to its next most like, likely line. But that in and of itself ain't going to make money for you. You need to read structure and you need to have good money management. Okay. And we've upped the game a lot since then with what we do here at Breakfast with a Master. Okay. So I think it's art. The first horizontal didn't phase you to stay in the second horizontal area. made you muscle your way out. It, it also, well, I don't know. Take a look at this. And it's horizontal, but can you see the higher highs and higher lows? But this is just chaotic to me. And I actually kind of felt it. So, and I, and I don't even know where it went. Actually, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to show you because there's other traits, but so... But to here, you can see, to me, it felt different. Now, maybe maybe you don't see it. But also, the other thing is, we go vertical, and then we get horizontal. And then we go vertical, and then we go horizontal. And the size of this vertical and the chaotic nature, I just wanted my money. And I was glad to take it here. Now, maybe it went to 70 bucks, But $3,500 a contract, I don't care. Thousand dollars a contract, Al should not care, right? Good area to take profit. Um oh let's see if that was triple. It was pretty close. 
very close. The, the key really is find the logical area for you and try and manage to it. And it doesn't matter if price goes further. So draw with a purpose. And I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to say two things. Draw with a purpose because you could trip yourself up really easily in here. Just like you could trip yourself up easily in this um, rolling chop down. But the key for this is how much is enough for you? When have you had enough? In this one, to get to here, you had to sit overnight. To get from here to here, you had to sit overnight. If you're not, if you don't want that, that's fine. Thousand dollars sitting right there for you without sitting overnight. Twenty-five hundred dollars without sitting overnight for the next night. So, how much is enough for you, and what are you willing to risk? Okay, everybody get it. And one, and and I'm listen. I'm going to be the first one to say it. And one lucky profit stop. I mean, we missed it. Where the hell is it? Where it is? It missed us by one tick, two ticks. So I'll take those because there are times when it, of course, doesn't work that way. By a red hair. That's right. All right, guys. It's not. It is not just luck. I'd like to say it's just luck. It's luck paired with. It's well. It's it's more than that. It's luck paired with having the right volatility. It's, the, it's pure statistics. Ouija's right. 80% of the time, it will keep you in the game. The other 20% of the time, that's life. So, I'll see you all on Friday. And actually, some of you, I, don't we have uh, evening with the master this week? I think we might. I haven't checked Wendy's calendar. I bet we do. So, anyway. Yes, we do. Okay. Have a great Monday. I'll see you later in the week, some of you. The rest of you I'll see you on Friday. Thank you. Uh, tape will be up as soon as I can. All right. Take care.